All right, welcome to Edison Motors. It's uh, May 12th. We're going to give you a few updates on the progress of the prototype build here. Production prototype build. So, as you know, we had Carl fully tested. Uh, we did have those few issues with Carl. So, why don't we go over some of the issues with Carl and what's really changing between Carl and the new truck? Let's have a look at it. All right, so as you know, Carl is our proof of concept and it really allowed us to test the generator charger, how the generator feeds the batteries, how the batteries feed the electric motor, how all that works together, how we did our control system, and it allowed us to do the engineering that's going into that truck behind us there. So some of the issues that we did have with Carl is we were running into some heating issues with the batteries. When we were running the generator under full load, everything was getting warm, and the problem is we just used the one truck rad. So we used the truck rad for the generator, batteries, and all that we thought would be enough. The coolant levels didn't quite line up. When the generator was under full load, it was causing a little bit of heating issues. So we realized on this truck, we're going with two rads. One of the other issues is, for obvious reasons, this drive line here keeps snapping. <laughs> we have a look here. Pass me the camera there, and I'll show these guys. Well, that little U-joint right in there, uh, she likes to snap. Believe it or not, a Tesla Model S motor will not pull 100,000 pounds without snapping that little U-joint. <laughs> All the rest is truck drive line. Now, we could have a new piece machined, a new piece made, but where we swap this truck build on is that it's getting a set of E-axles. So it's going to have electric motors basically on the front end. We're going to take this axle... Where this input shaft goes, there's going to be a big electric motor on basically on the front end of this diff. That's going to move the axle, so we're not going to be snapping U-joints because we're not going to be using a passenger sedan motor. But honestly, I don't mind. Like, we knew that this was a thing. So the problem was is that those E-axles had a 16-month lead time when we were starting it. They were a new product, especially for logging. We had to actually get them custom designed. That's a whole other thing for another day. But... We didn't want to sit around and wait for a year and a half. So by using that Tesla motor, we were able to control it. But it means that this truck does not want to haul a loaded trailer. We, it moves itself empty fine. We can do all the testing for fuel mileage being empty with an empty trailer. All that stuff works great. Got our, our control system works. The generator charges the batteries. The batteries provide the power. Everything works. It proved what we need to do. But with those lessons learned, we are now building the production prototype. This is the fully engineered ver version of this. All right, so this is some of the features I want to go over and our build progress. So to start out with the build progress, we have until September 9th to get this entire truck done. It's going to be displayed at the big Vancouver electric vehicle show. It's going to be a tight deadline to get this done in a few months, but we're optimistic. So where we're at right now, We've got the radiator in. This is the radiator for the CAT C9 generator, which is now mounted. So fun fact, this truck normally has a 15 liter engine. We've dropped it down to a nine liter engine, which means it's about a foot shorter, six inches long, shorter this way, shorter height wise. And the width is actually about the same. What we ended up doing though, is we had, we made a debate. We could either mount this lower, have it sitting down where the oil pad's at normal height, or we could have the top of the valve cover sitting at normal height. We decided that we were gonna lift this engine up, put that valve cover at the height of the 15 liter valve cover. That way it's a lot easier to access, service, and work on all the components. But one of the interesting things, we had to custom make our own cab mounts. Because we made it, normally those cab mounts are gonna be down inside of your frame rail, so what we did is we made a piece. On this piece, we have two bolts. Don't worry, the bolt is not going through the flange. The bolt is are just welded onto this. And that's our uh, engine mount for this thing. And then of course, behind here, we have our stand-in cab mounts. We're gonna beef these up, but this get, lets our cab height go on. Our cab structure is getting welded up. We're just welding on all the interior pieces right now. The display screen, we're gonna put the dash in, fix up some of, my crappy welding <laughs> we'll get dean to do that uh, then yeah on the back we have our cab supports 
This truck is going to be air ride, so the rear cab mounts are right on here. There we go, those are our rear cab mounts, so that way it's going to be air ride, and, you know, like a new truck. Going to be soft, cushiony. Honestly, I'm relatively happy of how this is going. The E-axle should be in next week, which means we can start working on the suspension in the back. The battery should be here within a month. We'll be able to start mounting these batteries probably by the end of June, I'm hoping. We'll have the batteries in, and then that gives us two months to wire in all of the controls, which should be all right. So to answer the question on this cab, there will be a second seat right there. Like, there is a passenger seat, it's just a, and we're two relatively big guys. There's plenty of room in here. There's a lot of room in here. I mean, by the time you got the door right there, it's plenty. There you go, it's like a tractor jump seat. But this is really for vocational trucks where you're not gonna be hauling a passenger a lot of the time. Most of the time you talk to like loggers and that, the only time they have a passenger is when they're bringing their kids or their girlfriend, and that's what the point of this little jump seat is. It's the girlfriend seat. <laughs> Giving the loaderman an extra five kilometer ride to the loader from his pickup or something like that. Yeah. It's not going to be a full time. No, it's not for a team driving truck because it's a day cab. It's, it's designed for a heavy vocational truck. I mean, this thing is basically a skitter cab. And right here, you have the option to put either a second jump seat or what we're gonna do is put all our control unit in the side here so you can access all your fuses, your relays, everything. Instead of having to tuck in behind a tight dash, be able to access it right here. And I mean, keep in mind that this is the prototype production cab. We're probably gonna be making some changes for the actual production production cab, but this is to figure out how we like the layout. So a lot of people were wondering, why did we go with center seating in a cab? Number one, it's like a skitter or a loader. The visibility is actually incredible. To be honest, we had a design contest on TikTok and we had over 90 people, I think it was 98 people, submit their drawings for what they thought an electric truck should look like. This design won, I think it had 32,000 votes. The runner up had 16,000 votes. So quite a huge difference in what people wanted for a heavy spec vocational truck. And I'll be honest myself, I wasn't sure of it until I could really see this view. You have such great visibility sitting in this cab and you have so much leg room. Like, what other truck? Can you just rest your feet right up there? <laughs> I mean, I don't recommend that when you're driving, but like, you got leg room for days. <laughs> you can really like stretch out, move your legs. You can man spread as much as you want. This cab is really great. And it also has the other advantage of making fun of Tesla. I think that was a large part. Edison Motors stealing Tesla's idea. Well, Tesla did a center seating cab and everybody, like it's a huge cab. It's wide for a day cab. Like it doesn't need to be that big. So we said like, well, they pretended that they were super innovative. Look how innovative we are with a center seating cab. And it's like, well, skitters, graders, bulldozers, loaders, all of them have center seating, rock trucks, all center seating because they have great visibility. It kind of makes sense once we did it, but Tesla didn't do anything unique. They just basically took a design that was already in heavy equipment and applied it to a truck. So we took that one step farther and applied the entire heavy equipment cab to the truck. But made it look good. Yeah, yeah, she looks good, right? Oh yeah. We'll find out when it's done. The looks are growing on me. The looks are honestly like the very first drawing of this truck. I wasn't quite sold if we're just being totally honest. But now that I see it and actually see it come together, I really like it. Well, I'll throw up a couple of the 3D renderings right now in this video. Yeah. And you can make, judge for yourself. Do you yeah. guys think it looks good? Leave a comment. Yeah, leave a comment. The 3D rendering should be coming up right now. Let us know what you think the final product looks like because this is also a great time to let us know because we can make any changes at this stage. Why don't we have a look here in the cab and I'm just gonna do a walk around to show you the visibility here. So to start, we'll just hold this head level. You can easily see and talk to anybody that comes up to your truck, walking around. So from here, you can easily see somebody directly at your steer tire. Uh, why don't you point where the front bumper is there? Front bumper will be right about here. Yeah. So right from there, you can literally see your front bumper 
from the driver's seat. And if we walk around, now that is like a standard hood. You'll lose somebody from there to about there. You can fit a car length in, same as a long nose Pete. But if you look out the side, you can see down the side to see anything you might. So for example, Theron there is standing right at the front bumper, walks around, just absolutely incredible visibility from this cab. Now what if, Chase, you're worried about privacy of me seeing you from down here? Oh, you don't want to be seen in. So the laws are anything from shoulder height and above can't be tinted more than like a 25% tint. But if it's down here because it's not directly in the driver's field of view, you can run limo tinting on the bottom windows, which means you'll be able to see out, but people can't see in. So you will have the privacy of those bottom windows being blacked out if you wanted. The office side has probably been just about as busy on this side because believe it or not, running a truck company requires talking to a lot of people, even in the office. Like we we're talking with the electrical engineers, the mechanical engineers, uh, just had a meeting here with the truck testing agency. So to how do we scale this truck up from small volume manufacturer to large volume and we got all the pricing to do like the full FM, SCS, S, too many acronyms but to do the level homogenization testing uh had a meeting about that we've been meeting with some of our engineers on designing the power distribution unit we've also been applying for some government grants we've never gotten any before because the government does not like to fund edison motors uh but we are applying for some grants to help us build a larger manufacturing facility what else are we working on right now in the office? Well, I got a model ready, right? Oh, yeah. So we can actually, like, real-time figure out what the fuel efficiency is, mm -hmm. right? So versus a typical diesel truck versus ours, yeah. you just basically spit out what that typical drive is for a driver, and it spits out what your savings would be. So pretty happy with that. Just got that finished a few weeks ago. Yeah, and we've been working on, uh, I've been working on the inventory parts list. So on the computer, everything that needs to get go into the truck, every single part. I've been putting them all on a master list, where we buy them, where our suppliers are. It's just literally a master list of the truck for any parts. When we need to order a new truck, we can just go in there, select the components, and that'll tell us the parts we need to order to build another kit or another thing based on retrofit, yada, yada, yada. That takes a lot of work. We've been having to work and build a uh, operator's manual for this truck. And we've been working on our IP filing. We just got our trademarks and, and we have a, what about 18, 21 patents pending now on all this technology equipment. So that also takes a lot of time. So I think there's about as much going on here in the office behind the scenes as actually in the truck. But it's kind of nice because now that we're in the middle of May, we can start transitioning from office, which has been the main focus, redoing all that engineering, to out in the shop and actually building the parts that we have ordered. So, kind of, kind of exciting. Mm -hmm. Well, some of the other projects we've been working on, we have this little T300 that's gonna be a service truck. So, we just got a coat of primer on it. We're gonna be spraying the base coat here in a day or two. Once it arrives, they, we ran short, but that's this truck. Our 1969 service truck, welding crane truck, turned out beautifully. This truck looks mint. We sandblasted, stripped down, redid all the frame rails, sanded it, painted it, Edison blue, set the grill off to get re-chromed. That should be back here next Friday. This service truck is the nicest service truck I think I've ever seen. One of. There's some nice service trucks out there, but it's in the top 10 for sure. While building these trucks, we've also been stepping out the production of these light towers. We are building an absolute ton of them, getting them shipped out more and more. So that's been growing while we've been building this prototype, repainting and redoing the service truck. So it has been absolutely insane here over the last couple months. So sorry I haven't got as many YouTubes as I want. We're gonna be putting out a lot more here now, especially as this channel is growing. Uh, so bear with me, there'll be a lot more content and we'll show you a lot more cool things that we're doing. Here's the back end of the service truck. As you can see, I think that is one hell of a nice crane truck. We gotta get the big Canadian flag on there. And then come this way, we'll show you behind the truck. Uh, for our light towers, we're now, we have a supplier that's actually just prefabbing all these parts for us. So currently we got these ones, we got those ones there on the go that just got shipped and a whole other stack of these. So 
they're prefabbed. All we got to do is bolt on the racks, bolt on the batteries, connect all the wiring, put the light mast on. So we can now mass produce these in a way. We don't have to build everything and weld every single part up by hand. That's what's really let us build those light towers back there at the same time we're doing the truck. So with Old Blue, we've done nothing because this girl is always good to go. Uh, the low bed, we've got prepped up, fixed a couple little things on it, got it primered. Uh, it's ready for its coat. It's gonna go Edison Blue to match. That service body, we got it sandblasted down, painted black. We're gonna put that onto the T300. So basically all we gotta do in the next three months is build 15 more light towers, put the service body and turn that into a service truck. And we gotta build an entire electric truck from the frame rails up all by September. Shit, that's not a lot of time. We actually gotta get working, shit. Guys, we got a lot of work to do. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, turn on, we got three. Yeah.